How's it going my fellow weebs and welcome back to another video on the channel. Guess what? I got a new microphone. How does it sound? Let me know in the comments below. Just so you know, this is a Audio-Technica AT2020 XLR cardioid condenser microphone. Everything um, that has to do with my gear, I'll link it in the description so you guys could check it out as well. Not affiliate links yet, unfortunately, but we'll get there someday. How does it make my voice sound if I get closer? Does it make my voice sound sexier if I get closer like this? Let me know in the comments below. Today we're going to be reacting to some of the craziest rules or laws that exist in Japan. Now, I've been living in Japan for about uh, two and a half years now and uh, I know a lot of laws here but um, I'm probably going to be surprised myself at how much I don't know. Let me know in the comments below if you guys knew any of these laws. Before we get started make sure to smash that like button and subscribe. Watch the video till the end because there's some crazy laws in here that you do not want to miss. Alright without further ado let's get started. 21. Cooking Fugu Most of us know how to cook without having to go through school or extensive training. However, to prepare fugu, oh, yeah. chefs must undergo 11 years of schooling, nearly as many years of preparation as it takes to become a doctor. Actually, I didn't I didn't know that it took that long to learn how to master the art of filleting or filleting, I guess the term is what you call it, uh, fugu. Fugu is a blowfish, basically, and um, it's very poisonous so in japan you have to have like like a license basically to cut this and serve this to people or else um you know because if you you can act you can accidentally kill a person very easily with fugu because um it's very poisonous so i knew that but i didn't know it took 11 years no fugu refers to the puffer fish or blowfish eating certain parts of this fish is deadly because it contains a lethal I've actually called tetrodotoxin yeah to obtain this right to cook fugu chefs need to complete a three-year apprenticeship take classes pass a written exam and show their skill by making at least a dozen different fugu meals wow wow i didn't know it was that extensive man that's crazy that's really hard i've actually had fugu myself it doesn't taste like anything there's oh uh, well maybe some people get angry if i said that but it doesn't taste like anything really you have to have it with like a side of soy sauce or something or ponzu sauce and it usually is served like uh, sashimi style no fugu over 80 seconds on the oh, topic fugu again okay fish, <laughs> japan made it illegal to cook fugu for more than 80 seconds as implied earlier, blowfish must be cut and prepared a specific way to avoid serving someone a poisonous dish. Even with all that training, there are between 20 and 40 cases of poisoning a la fugu fish reported in Japan wow, every that's year. that's a lot more than the I thought. The deadliest parts of the fish are the intestines, eyes, kidneys, ovaries, skin, and liver. All right, what do we got next? 19. Climbing without a license. Climbing without a are license? Are talking about climbing mountains? No. What about climbing buildings? No, again. This law prohibits people from climbing telephone poles without a license. We don't telephone know why poles? too many people would be doing what? this anyway unless it was their profession, but hey, it must have happened enough for it to be outlawed. There have been numerous accidents involving climbing power lines throughout the years. On top of that, Japan has even more power lines than other countries do. Japan cannot sustain underground power grids like other places because oh. of all of the earthquakes. Oh yeah, there are so many earthquakes here. I'll get into that in another video, but basically it's one of the things I do not like about Japan. I had the first earthquake experience I had in Japan was like a four on the scale. I don't know what that means really, but and that was like very far away and my whole room shook like this and I, th I thought my TV was going to fall over. So I was literally holding on to my TV like this and uh, it was crazy. It's so scary. And if you're in a really tall building, it's even worse. 18. Women banned from Omine. In Nara, Japan, sits what Mount is Omine, Omine, a sacred mountain oh. covered in greenery, standing at an elevation of 5,600 feet. You would think it would be a lovely, spiritually satisfying hiking experience. While that's true, it's only accurate for a portion of the population. Japan wow. banned women from climbing to the top of Mount Omine, a law that carried over from older Shinto traditions that reasoned women would distract men from the beautiful scenery. Women can still pass through the Kumano pilgrimage route, popular among tourists, but are not allowed to start a trek to the mountain's peak. <laughs> Jesus, Japan. All right. <laughs> okay. 17. Stay decent when cold. During mm -hmm. the summertime, it's a blessing to run into an air-conditioned building when cold. after being outside. For women in Japan, they need to be a little more cautious about what they wear on those hot days because it's illegal for them not to wear bras in a building with a cooling system. It's illegal? Where is it? Is that really a law? 
I mean, I know this is a video made by uh, not a Japanese person, but I'm sure they did their research, but is that written down somewhere? You can't wear a bra, what was it? A little more cautious about what they wear on those hot days because it's illegal for them not to wear bras in a building with a cooling system. It's illegal for them not to wear bras in a building with a cooling system. Interesting. Even if your shirt isn't sheer, if hmm. anyone can tell how cold you are judging from your chest, you might face some legal trouble because it is considered distracting to men. Wow, okay. 16, always report explosives. Many places have implemented a type of see something, say something rule. I mean, that if seems you are a passerby justifiable. and you witness strange activity, such as someone looking suspicious, abandoning bags, or congregating menacingly, then you're supposed to notify authorities. In Japan, if the police find out that you saw an explosive somewhere and didn't report it, you can be fined somewhere between 100 to 10,000 yen. Oh, okay, so one, I was about to say, I thought that was dollars. So 100 yen is like $1, 10,000 yen is 100. So it's like one to 100, it's like a one to $100 fine. That's crazy, you get a fine if you don't report it? What if, what if you're like, um, like really scared or in, you know, really pressured or something? I don't know, that's kind of weird. And how would they know that you, that specifically you didn't report that? That's kind of weird. 15, money back election expenses. Running for a position in the government isn't easy. You need to be likable, make headlines, have policies people want, and hope that all the people that say they love you prove it at the polls. On top of that, mm. funding a campaign is really expensive. You need to pay the people working for you, spend money on traveling and booking venues for your rallies. In Japan, people that are part of campaigning for an election may be reimbursed up to 12,000 yen for meals, snacks, and hotel expenses. Wow. 14, the rule of wedlock babies. There are two main ways someone can acquire Japanese nationality of birth, hmm. naturalization or notification. Naturalization yeah, happens that. in one of three ways. If either of your parents is a Japanese citizen, if the father is a Japanese national but dies before the child's birth, or if the child is born on Japanese soil. Hmm. One interesting aspect of the rule is that if the mother is Japanese, the state automatically grants the child Japanese nationality. Hmm. However, if the child is born to a foreign mother out of wedlock, the Japanese father must officially recognize the child when the baby is still in the womb. If they are too oh. late to do so, they have to wait until the child is 20 years 20. old to be recognized again. Wow, that, oh, you have to wait till you're 20 years old to become a citizen in Japan if, if you're born out of wedlock, I guess, and the, the mother is a not Japanese national. Japan's got some interesting laws, that's for sure. 13. Not a walk in the park. The Japanese government is doing all it can to keep its parks as clean as possible. One of these rules includes prohibiting spitting saliva uh, in a public park. The law allows Japanese- I can't tell you how many times I've seen like people spit on the ground here. Uh, especially, not targeting anyone, but I've seen a lot of elderly people, like especially older men, just spit on the ground. It's disgusting. Japanese citizens to spit in trash cans or even on the street. Once they cross into recreational park territory, however, make sure you keep some tissues on hand because there's no spitting out here. If authorities catch you, you may be fined 1,000 up to 10,000 wow. yen. Plus, the offense I mean, may yeah. stay part of your permanent criminal. Yeah, I agree with that. Don't Aside spit on the spinning, ground. Noise levels are regulated at parks, as are the length of jungle gym slides and aggressively kicking balls. The government cites these actions as safety precautions, mm. but many residents cite it as attributing to boredom. 12. Brew 1% only. Are you a fan of home brewed beverages? Unless you like rather weak alcohol, I actually don't you drink alcohol anymore. To Japan. In this East Asian country, it is illegal to home brew a drink that is over 1% alcohol. Really? For those who don't follow this rule, you can face up to five years in prison. Whoa. I don't know about the laws in America, but I always see in like TV shows where people brew their own beer and stuff. I guess that's, you know, beer's like 5%. Yeah, normal beer is like 5% alcohol. Yeah, I guess it's a, I guess it's a, okay in America, but not okay in Japan. You get, uh, you know, imprisoned up for five years, I guess. Plus a fine of 50 mon yen. Americans, that's about $5,000. That entails no brewing any wine or beer at home unless you want something that tastes nothing like wine or beer. What you can do is brew non-alcoholic drinks that more or less have a taste that resembles beer but without the alcohol aftertaste. Is that any fun though? 
11. Cutting in line. If you travel everywhere around the world, chances are you will find most cultures think lowly of people who cut in line. Mm. In America, people that choose to cut in a queue might be subject to dirty looks, complaints to the manager, or maybe some verbal altercations. In Japan, people who cut in line might face a different fate. Japanese culture mm. emphasizes self-discipline and respect, so anything that practices rude behavior is looked down upon. If you gently slip in in front of someone else, most likely that person may scold you or just silently feel appalled. If you decide to shove people out of the way, be prepared for a call to the police and a pretty hefty fine. I agree with that. <laughs> I I so much ha uh, d like hate. I hate when people cut in line. And actually, they do not cut. In I've never had an um, instance when people cut in line in Japan yet since I've lived here. Um, in America, yeah, I've had people cut in front of me all the time. I just get in my I'm not a very physical person. So I just in my head, I'm like, ah, <laughs> Just want to like push them out of the line but um yeah in japan um people just are courteous they don't cut in line unless they're like a bunch of jerks that are drunk or something 10. no money burning the japanese currency is renowned for always looking somewhat crisp banks often replace old notes quickly and coins are usually clean it is illegal to deface money in japan as is throwing money away as a result mm. most bills and coins you see are in pristine condition yeah. compared to the currency from somewhere else people consider it more polite to pay stores with neat bills rather than crumbled ones i've actually heard about this and my wallet where is my wallet i don't have my wallet with me but um it's like a fold type of wallet like um a western style wallet but a lot of people in japan have like purse kind of st style wallets where um they just unzip it and it's like horizontal so the bill doesn't get bent basically but my wallet bends the bills and i just um well i i usually pay with card now nowadays in japan actually it used to be like in japan where it was like mostly only cash which is very irritating to me now it's become a lot a lot of places have uh made their stores available to pay with uh card and uh, i do that now but basically cash in japan apparently yeah i've heard it's rude to give like crumpled cash or or uh, like bent cash or a little bit ripped cash uh, bills to the cashiers and stuff so don't do that so i i mean if you're gonna live in japan or come to japan maybe get a wallet that doesn't uh, bend the bills drunk writing it's a given that drunk driving is illegal. That's a universal law you'll find in drunk most riding, areas. Yeah. But to take it a step further, Japan has prohibited drunk bike riding. Intoxicated cyclists may- Oh yeah. I mean, dude, I've seen drunk people riding a bike before here and it, it's not it's not pretty. Yeah, they, they uh, I've seen a person literally crash into a pole and they're like, ooh, because they're so drunk and it's, yeah. I, <laughs> don't drink and ride. <laughs> a penalty of five years in prison and a fine of one million yen which is around one thousand dollars i didn't know that it was that much of a punishment holy crap other rules bike riders should follow don't use a cell phone while riding no riding with two people on a single person bike no holding an umbrella while riding and no riding side by side that last one can earn you a twenty thousand yen fine that's Eight. about two hundred dollars. Don't take the trash yet. Japan's cities are famous for how clean the streets appear compared to areas of the same size in other countries. The Japanese take their garbage yeah. very seriously. There are specific bins for trash so that it's apart from recyclables such as paper, plastic, and aluminum cans. People that live in Japan have to be mindful of when they take their trash out to the curb too. Bringing out garbage bags too early may result in a fine. Yeah. So. I've never had a fine happen, but of course, I, I mean, as a foreigner, I mess up the trash all the time here, but um, I get why they do it. I understand it. it. It's actually a good system, but it is so freaking annoying, though, <laughs> to, you know, separate all the trash like that. In America, we just have like recycle and trash and that's it. But in Japan, each day has a different type of trash. Like Monday will be burnable trash, like I don't know, banana peels or something, food. Um, Tuesday is bottles. Wednesday is cans. Um, uh, and Saturday is like cardboard and stuff and each day is different and you have to basically take out take out the trash every single night and even the bottles you have to take the wrapping off of the bottle and separate the cap from the bottle and those go in two different things and some places are really strict like that that seems ridiculous but it helps prevent a gathering of animals at your door like yeah. birds rodents and cats seven cockroaches in japan are awful i live on like the fourth floor of my building so I, I don't have bugs really but if you're on the first or second floor 
You, you can get cockroaches if you're not careful, and they are d disgusting here. Of change. Math is a finite system, but people's actions are not. As a result, sometimes you are given too much change back after a purchase. In Japan, receiving too much change is against the law. If you leave a store with the really? knowledge that the cashier returned too much money, it counts as fraud. Also, don't give too much money when you pay for food either. Tipping isn't a custom in Japan, <laughs> and your server may feel insulted that you left them extra money. Yes. Um, I didn't know about the first thing that they said, which was about the um, change. I didn't know it was like that, you know, strict about the change, but I did know about the tipping. Um, the first time I studied abroad in Japan, I tipped a uh, restaurant, like I gave a tip. And then as I walked out, um, this is my first time uh, granted. So as I walked out, I was getting on my bike to ride back to my university and uh, the guy's this chasing, me, literally chasing me down like, oh, excuse me, sir. I have, I have your money. Uh, you forgot it. <laughs> So yeah, you don't tip in Japan, which is great. <laughs> uh, I don't think it's rude um, from my experience. I think they just like, if you tip in Japan, they're like, why? Why did you give us money? Here, have it back. We don't want it. <laughs> Six, under peer pressure. One of the big things they warn you about in school is alcohol and drugs and that your friends will try their best to persuade you into doing hmm. stupid things. Most of us grew up in places where peer pressure wasn't as scary as the educational videos in class made it out to be. Japan doesn't have a lenient view on such matters. There, it is illegal to make someone drink. It's an interesting hmm. law considering That's that good. drinking in social settings is such a big part of their culture. But Japan sees aggressive peer pressure towards someone who doesn't want to drink as an act of coercion. Yeah. I, that's a good Five, rule to have. Report all alien life. What? Wait, what? There's a law. Let me get this straight. There's a law to report all alien life. That's kind of weird, man. Wow. Okay. Mean alien as in someone who came from another country. We do mean alien as in from outer space. At least that's what the Japanese government is looking for. If you do happen to discover life in outer space, you must report it to authorities. I mean, yeah. The government warns that extraterrestrial existence is a hazard to public health, so you must let the Secretary General of the UN know that you found aliens. Four, the divorce system. Here's another line women must make sure they don't cross. If you are female and want to file for divorce, go right ahead. Just remember that you must wait six months before marrying again. That sounds most- You have to, what? Okay, so you have to wait six months before marrying again if you're female and you get divorced? I did not know that. I don't think there's a law like that in America, but you know, tell me in the comments if I'm wrong. Tell you here that men do not have to abide by the same restriction. If a woman gives birth before these six months are up, guess what? That child legally belongs to your ex-husband, not you. Wait a second. Six months are up, guess what? By the same restriction. If a woman gives birth before these six months are up, guess what? That child legally belongs to your ex-husband, not you. Really? So custody immediately goes to the ex-husband. If you have a, if you get divorced as a woman, and it's you know it be, it's before the six months are up, that's crazy, Japan. <laughs> of course, I don't know if this is true or not, or if it changed, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Three, the brother-in-law. Are What's you this? absolutely in love with your girlfriend? Well, we hope your older brother isn't too, because in Japan he's legally allowed to steal her away from you. What? What? There, uh, what? Hold on. I gotta look this. This is a little bit outright. I gotta look this up, man. Yeah, I don't know about that one. I, I, I mean, maybe in, in the past it was true, but I looked it up in both English and Japanese on Google. I didn't really find anything. Supposedly, there is a law that states oh, if your older brother wants to marry your significant other and they promise by law to honor you, then there is nothing standing in the way of him marrying her. The girlfriend must agree. We hope this one isn't true, though. Yeah, me too. That's kind of weird. Two, say when you leave. Fancy a trip to Antarctica, the coldest, most desolate hmm. place in the world? Don't forget to let the Japanese government know. Tourism is on the rise in Antarctica, and all the government asks is that you report any intended trips to this southernmost continent. The government must clear your trip before you go. That's interesting. So you have to... I don't... I've never been to Antarctica before, but apparently if you go to Antarctica... You have to report it to the Japanese government that you're uh, leaving to go there. So, um, yeah, that's kind of weird. All right, final rule. Let's see what we got. Rules of a duel. 
Dueling Duel. seems like a practice that was left behind in the previous no centuries, way. but not so in Japan. Say someone challenges <laughs> you to a duel. You cannot insult them or embarrass them on purpose because... <coughs> <coughs> Jesus. I was stuck in my throat for a while. It counts as defamation. Don't go ahead and fight them either because that's illegal too. Japan officially banned duels in the late 1980s, but that doesn't stop people from trying to start them. Another incentive to not duel is that if you perish during a duel, insurance companies won't pay your next of kin. Okay, I guess I guess you can duel in Japan. I didn't know that. Um, yeah, that's, I mean, that's pretty weird. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video uh, reacting to the craziest laws only in Japan. If you liked it, make sure to smash that like button and hit subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.